Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this case of a patient with a moderately dense lens. And uh, even though I was able to spin the lens during hydrodissection, when I tried to spin the second hemineucleus in front of me, I noticed there was quite a bit of tension. The lens was kind of stuck to the back still. And, uh, you know, there's some weak zonules with this dense lens. So you're going to see how I'm able to very easily help prolapse that second hemineucleus up out of the back. So I use a cotton tip to stabilize the eye. The patient has some eye movements here. I use a corneal marker, which will help me to center and size the rexus. And this is my paracentesis blade. I'm going to make an incision first on the right side and then the left side, making sure that the incision is parallel to the iris plane, which creates a nice corneal shelf, which will allow me to achieve a self-sealing corneal incision. You can see there's quite a bit of oily material on the surface of the eye. I always try to remove all that oily material first before I get going with the case. Then inject some intracameral lidocaine and then some dispersive viscoelastic to fill the chamber and flatten the anterior capsule. This is a 2.4 millimeter metal blade. This will be a bi-beveled incision. Make an incision, just stick it right close to the limbus, but not in the limbus, because you can get some kind of tavla chemosis with these blades. Tunnel through the cornea. Once I get to that little mark, I use a cannula to turn the eye towards me and enter. This is the puncture style capsule rexus. But before doing that, I injected some more viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber more and flatten the anterior capsule. So this is a puncture style rexus. I puncture, pull downward towards me, grab the right side of the tear to create a flat. I'm going around circumferentially using the corneal mark that I made to help guide me, to help me center and size the rexus. And that extra dollop of viscoelastic before I do the rexus seems to help with my control of my rexus. This 2.4 is a little bit bigger than the 2.6, so it does take a little bit more effort to really make sure you find the edge of that tear when you're grasping for the rexus. So this is a capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place a cannula out underneath the rexus edge, contraincisionally point the tip down, get a nice fluid wave, decompress the bag, point the tip down and on the right side, and then very carefully, I'm gonna to try to spin the lens. This lens doesn't spin very freely, which again is a sign that perhaps this lens is stuck to the bag or there's some weak zonules. Irrigating the surface of the cornea, especially since there was a lot of oily material at the beginning of the case. I'm removing a lot of oil there, just profuse irrigation during this step. I don't want that oil to get into the eye. I'm lifting the incision with the chopper, going in with irrigation off to minimize decimase trauma, removing the surface epinuclear material, placing the chopper underneath the epinuclear ridge. Sliding it out into the equator, pointing the phaco tip vertically subincisionally, bringing the instruments together in the same plane, crushing the lens in half. That's the double chop. Placing the chopper around the right hemineucleus, around the equator, pulling it centrally towards the phaco tip, dividing that right hemineucleus. That is the cross chop. Using a little bit of vacuum to lift that first quadrant up, getting around it with the chopper, crushing it and dividing it into smaller pieces and then emulsifying the lens pieces. Placing the chopper around the second quadrant, pulling it centrally towards the finger tip with another cross chop maneuver, and then emulsifying the lens pieces once they're small enough to emulsify. Tried to get around that last piece of that second quadrant, but instead I just decided to tease it off separate it from the rest of the lens and the most the lens piece. So here is when I'm trying to turn the lens and it's really not moving. I guess I could just keep yanking on the lens and what we'll do is just, just stress the zonules. And so I don't really like doing it that way. So I'm gonna come out first and then I'm using my right angled hydrodissection cannula. This is a Kim capsule fornix cannula. I have no financial interests. So I'm rehydrodissecting. When I rehydrodissect, you can see that the lens is coming up and this is really the endonucleus that's coming up. I find the edge of the endonucleus, hook it with the 
cannula, you saw it, since it's a right angle cannula, I can use it almost as a lens manipulator. I hooked it and just lifted it up out of the bag. So I go in with the chopper and the finger tip, and since the lens is mobile now, I just reposition it under irrigation only, crushing it using mechanical fracturing forces. Just positioning the instruments between the lens material, crushing it into smaller size pieces, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. Again, there is quite a bit of density to this lens. So again, positioning the lens just under irrigation, sandwiching the lens piece between the chopper and the ficka tip. And then once the pieces are smaller, initiating some vacuum to position the lens piece, crushing it even more, dividing it even more, and then emulsifying the lens piece. So positioning the lens piece on the tip, crushing it into smaller pieces, and then emulsifying the lens piece. That's the final piece of endonucleus, again, crushing it into smaller pieces, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. Once the endonucleus is removed, I'm removing the epinucleus. You can see the epinucleus is adherent to the capsular bag, which again is a sign of why the lens didn't really want to spin because the epinucleus is still stuck fairly well to the bag, which tells me I must have achieved a really kind of a hydrodelineation very close to the capsular bag, not quite hydrodissection of the epinucleus off the capsular bag. So I take the chopper out, push BSS in, take the faker tip out, and then go in with the INA handpiece. Starting sub-incisionally, removing the cortical material adherent to the bag sub-incisionally again, and then removing some of that very thin epinuca material. Going underneath the rexus edge, peeling off the cortex off the bag circumferentially. And then switching to polish mode again, Whenever I have trouble spinning the lens, I do think that there is some zonular weakness as well. And so out of an abundance of precaution, and this is the way I do all my cases, so I, I never have to worry about accidentally causing some zonular stress, switch to polish mode early and start to polish underneath the rexus edge. And you can see with all my cases, I don't spin the lens vigorously throughout the entire case. And so really with my technique, I'm able to disassemble the lens, even if the lens was completely stuck to the bag. Even if I didn't hydrodissect at all, I feel pretty confident I'd be able to get the lens out of the bag and disassemble it, even without that hydrodissection. Again, it's because of the way I do this, the case. I don't depend upon spinning the lens in order to get the lens out. So I'm using the BSS cannula to pulse the subincisional capsule fornix, and you see there's a, quite a bit of lens material that comes out. And I, I notice this more when there's quite a bit of cortical and lens material stuck to the bag. And uh, there's a lot of posterior capsule adhesions that tend to have more sub-incisional lens material there. So I fill the capsular bag with cohesive viscoelastic. And then I'm gonna sweep first on the left side and then the right side underneath the rexus edge. You saw that I had some trouble with my settings. I kept going back and forth with the foot pedal and that's because I'm trying to control the steps and advance the steps myself and sometimes i press it too many times and advance too far or too far backward you can see i'm using the sweeper to polish underneath the sub incisional area there's quite a bit of lens material that's coming out here but i'm very carefully and gently and patiently just teasing all that stuff out so again there's a lot more lens material than you think there would be sometimes so it's always important to check and to sweep So I'm polishing on the right side now. This is a three-piece lens. Again, because of these dense lenses, I do think there's some weaker zonules in these situations. So I'm going to widen the incision to accommodate the three-piece lens. I'm going to inject it through the main incision. Have the barrel facing to the left. 
By doing so, the leading haptic comes out flat and parallel to the iris plane. Make sure the leading haptic goes within the bag. As the optic is delivered, I'm rotating it 90 degrees counterclockwise, which allows the optic to come out flat as well. I'm going to deliver the trailing haptic into the bag with the Maltzman. Go in with irrigation off and then activate. Go underneath the lens, starting to remove the viscoelastic from within the bag and underneath the lens itself, making sure there's no trapped lens material. Switching to polish mode and then visco mode and removing all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. And then I'll hydrate my incision. So again, in this case, the second hemonucleus was stuck rather than trying to torque the bag and stress those annuals, I used the right angled hydrodissection cannula, the Kim Capsular Fornix cannula. I rehydrodissected. Once it became loose, I can see the edge of the endonucleus, and I literally hooked the lens up just like it was a chopper. I used the right angle cannula literally as a lens manipulator, pulling it up out of the bag. And then again, in these cases, when the zonules are and because of my techniques and how I do standard cataract surgery, I'm not rotating the lens very aggressively. I don't have to depend upon rotating the lens. So this is a very zonular friendly way to do uh, cataract surgery, as well as using minimal ultrasonic energy to help protect the cornea and hopefully provide a very safe and effective surgery. So I hope this was helpful to you. And I thank you for your attention.